Welcome to Electron Online. Now that we understand the concept of direction cosines and the definition of that, we're going to use that to determine angles in three dimensions. So here we have a flat plane. We have the x direction to the right. We have the y direction going up and the z direction coming out in this, in this way. Now notice we have a weight hanging from a rope that's on that plane. Now, of course, that's not the only rope that should be in place there because otherwise the thing is going to of course swing back and forth but let's assume there's other forces involved that we haven't drawn on the board and we want to know the angle between this particular force or this particular tension connection so this is a rope connecting this to a place on the plane it's hanging down from there notice that the weight is hanging down 1.6 meters below the plane it's it's suspended uh, it's, it's suspended by the string here that's connected over here which is a distance of 0.4 meters away from the z-axis and 0.78 meters away from the x-axis. So what is the angle between this line right here, this rope, and the vertical axis, the vertical axis in the y direction? So we're looking for theta sub y. So again, let's write down the direction cosine. We know that the cosine of theta sub y is equal to the y component of the force, y component of the force, or y component of the string that's holding it up, divided by the magnitude of the force. Or in this case, we can simply say that it's the, in this case, we can say that it's the y component of L divided by L. So in this case, we can say that the cosine of theta sub y is equal to the y component of L divided by L. L, of course, is the length of this string, the length of that distance right there, which is basically the hypotenuse of that three-dimensional triangle. All right, now let's see here. How do we determine L? Well, L, of course, we can use Pythagorean theorem. We can say that L is equal to the square root of L sub x squared plus L sub y squared plus L sub z squared. And in this case, we know what those components are, so that's equal to the square root of... L sub x, of course, would be the x component, which is 0.4 meters, so that's 0.4 squared plus L sub y, which would be, L sub y would be this right here, would be 1.6, 1.6 squared, and L sub z, of course, that would be the 0.78, so 0.78 squared. So that gives us the magnitude of the length of that distance L, and I'm looking for my calculator, so we have 0.4 squared, plus 1.6 squared plus 0.78 squared equals, and then we take the square root of that, and we get 1.824. It's equal to 1.824. Let me do a quick check here. So 0.4 squared plus 1.6 squared plus 0.78 squared equals square root 1.824. That would be the length of this. So L equals 1.824 meters. So now to find the angle, we go back to the definition of the direct and cosine, which is this right here. And so we can say that theta sub y therefore is equal to the r cosine of the ratio of the y component divided by the total magnitude. So it's equal to the r cosine of L sub y. So L sub y here would be 1.6, that's this component right here. 1.6 divided by the hypotenuse, 1.824. And take the inverse of that times 1.6. That gives us the arc cosine, so you can follow, of 0 0.877. And yes, and so take the arc cosine of that, and we get 28.7 degrees. So the angle of this line right here, the L line with the vertical, the y direction, is equal to 28.7 degrees. And that's how we find angles in three dimensions. Now, what if we want to find the angle with respect to the x-axis and the angle with respect to the y-axis? Now, notice in this case, it's visually easy to see the angle between L and the y-axis. But how do you see the angle between L and the x-axis and L and the z-axis? That's a little bit more difficult to do. One trick that we can use, which really helps, is to move the line L kind of treat it as a vector and move the line L to take this point and move it over there and have the same angle going this way. So if we put this line over here and draw the line in this direction, like so, 
and now you can see you can find the angle between L and the x-axis and L and the z-axis and it seems to make a little bit more sense. When it's drawn in the original drawing it's very difficult to visualize the angle between L and the x-axis and L and the z-axis but even if you can visualize it you could still easily calculate those angles by using the direction cosines. So for other words you can say that theta sub x is equal to the r cosine of the component in the x direction divided by L and we can find theta sub z as being the r cosine of L sub z divided by L and so let's go ahead and do that so the r cosine of L sub x L sub x is 0.4 so we get 0.4 divided by 1.824 and here this would be the r cosine of L sub z which is 0.78 so 0.78 divided by 1.824 and let's find out what those two angles are so we have 0.4 divided by 1.824 take the arc cosine of that we get 77.3 degrees and to find the angle between L the direction of L and the z-axis we get 0.78 divided by 1.824 and take the R cosine of that and we get 64.7 degrees 64.7 degrees so there's all three angles the angle with respect to the y-axis the angle with respect to the x-axis and the angle with respect excuse me with respect to the z-axis and that's how we use the direction cosines to find the angles between any direction or any vector in the x y and z axes now take a look at the size of the direction cosine See, the direction cosine would be the ratio of the component divided by the length of the vector, or in this case, the length of L. If that direction cosine is, if that ratio is small, so therefore direction cosine is small, then it's directed away from that axis. So the bigger the angle, the smaller the direction cosine. The smaller the angle, the bigger the direction cosine. So the size of direction cosine gives you a feel of the alignment or or the closeness of the direction of the vector or the line that you're looking for with the axis in consideration. So if the ratio is big, the vector is aligned very close to the axis. If the direction cosine is small, the, the vector is directed away from that axis. And that's how we can read direction cosines and that's how we find angles in three dimensions.